Welcome to another episode of our historical tales. Today, we're delving into the life and times of Frederick Barbarossa, a towering figure of medieval Europe. Let's dive into his extraordinary journey. In the picturesque town of Weiblingen, nestled in the heart of Swabia, Germany, a legend was born. The year was 1122, and Frederick Barbarossa, a name that would echo through the annals of history, took his first breath. From an early age, it was evident that Frederick possessed an indomitable spirit and a thirst for adventure. As a child, he was enamored by the tales of knights and chivalry that his tutors would narrate. His imagination would run wild with dreams of leading armies, conquering lands, and uniting a fractured empire. The young lion was being groomed for greatness his destiny intertwined with the fate of the Holy Roman Empire. Fast forward to the year 1152. The empire was in the throes of upheaval. Emperor Conrad had passed, and the torch was passed to the young Frederick Barbarossa. At the age of 30, he ascended the throne, resolute in his mission to restore order and unity to the realm. The Holy Roman Empire a patchwork of feuding territories and conflicting interests, yearned for a guiding hand. Frederick, a man of charisma and vision, sought to bring stability to this tumultuous tapestry. He was not content with merely being a figurehead. He aimed to reforge the empire into a force to be reckoned with. Frederick's ascension was not without its challenges. The nobility tested his mettle, attempting to gauge the resolve of this young ruler. But Frederick proved to be a lion-hearted leader, unyielding in his pursuit of a united realm. His early years on the throne were a relentless crusade, not of steel and might, but of diplomacy and statesmanship. In his court, he gathered advisors and strategists, forming a formidable team to help shape his vision. It was a tapestry of minds, each thread weaving a path towards a stronger empire. The young lion, now a king, was ready to roar, ready to embark on a journey that would etch his name into the annals of history. With a crown adorning his head and a nation awaiting his command, Frederick Barbarossa set out to prove that he was not merely an emperor by title, but a lion of true metal. The landscape of the Holy Roman Empire was a mosaic of ambitions and rivalries, a canvas waiting for Frederick's masterstroke, one of his earliest endeavors was to bring order to the unruly Italian territories within the empire. Frederick knew that a firm hand was needed to pacify the feuding Italian cities and establish a semblance of unity. He journeyed south, his resolve unwavering. The Italian campaigns were a test of Frederick's strategic brilliance. He faced a myriad of challenges, from navigating treacherous alliances to quelling uprisings. The young emperor showcased his prowess, employing a blend of diplomacy and force to establish the imperial authority. However, the challenges were not confined to Italy alone. Within the empire, the Welfs, traditional rivals of the Hohenstaufens, sought to challenge Frederick's rule. Henry the Lion, a formidable Welf duke, stood as a symbol of opposition. The clash was inevitable, a confrontation that would echo through the annals of history. The conflict with Henry the Lion was a defining moment. Frederick, like a lion protecting its territory, faced down this mighty opponent. The battle was fierce and the stakes were high. Yet, in the end, it was Frederick who emerged victorious, securing his position and further establishing the might of the Hohenstaufens. Emperor Frederick's military campaigns were marked by a blend of might and diplomacy. He wasn't just a conqueror. He was a statesman. His strategies were meticulous, his movements calculated. Each campaign was a brushstroke, painting a picture of a united Holy Roman Empire under his reign. The lion had been unleashed, and his roar reverberated through the empire. The path to unification was paved with challenges, but Frederick Barbarossa was undeterred. His vision was grand, his determination unshakable. Emperor Frederick Barbarossa 
having established his authority within the empire, set his sights on a grander stage, the Holy Land. The call for the Third Crusade echoed throughout Europe, reaching the ears of the lion-hearted ruler. Frederick saw this as an opportunity, not just for Christendom, but to further cement his legacy as a formidable leader. In 1189, the Third Crusade commenced, and Frederick, a man nearing his 70s, donned his armor once more. He led a massive army towards the east, determined to reclaim Jerusalem and restore the honor of Christendom. His lion-hearted spirit burned brighter than ever. The journey to the Holy Land was an arduous one, filled with trials and tribulations. The harsh Anatolian terrain and the challenges posed by unfamiliar lands tested the resolve of the Crusaders. Yet, Frederick remained steadfast, his lion spirit unyielding. As the crusading forces press on, tragedy struck. In June 1190, while attempting to cross the Celef River in Anatolia, Frederick Barbarossa met a sudden and untimely end. The currents were fierce, and the lion, who had faced countless foes, succumbed to the might of nature. The news of Frederick's demise sent shockwaves through the Crusaders. The lion-hearted emperor was gone, leaving behind a void that could not be filled. His death was a bitter blow to the crusading efforts, a loss mourned by Christendom. Though Frederick Barbarossa did not live to see the Holy Land, his legacy endured. He had answered the call, his intentions noble and his spirit indomitable. His lion's roar, though silenced, would resonate through the ages, inspiring generations to come. Frederick Barbarossa's legacy was more than the sum of his reign. It was a legacy of a lion-hearted emperor whose roar continued to echo even after his passing. The impact of his rule rippled through the Holy Roman Empire influencing politics, culture, and the very fabric of medieval society. The centralization of authority was a cornerstone of Frederick's vision for the empire. Although his efforts were a work in progress, the foundation he laid served as a template for future rulers. His determination to unify the empire paved the way for the consolidation of power, gradually transforming disparate territories into a more cohesive nation Legal reforms enacted during Frederick's reign were a testament to his foresight. He recognized the necessity of a standardized legal system to ensure justice and order across the empire. By instigating reforms, he set in motion a process that would culminate in a more harmonized legal framework in the centuries to come. Frederick's patronage of art and architecture signaled a cultural renaissance within the empire. He was not merely a warrior, he was a connoisseur of culture. His support for Romanesque architecture and the arts left an indelible mark, fostering creativity and inspiring generations of artists and craftsmen. The legacy of Frederick Barbarossa was not confined to the bounds of the empire. He became a symbol of imperial power, a beacon for future rulers, and a reference point for the ideal Holy Roman Emperor. His reign served as a benchmark for those who sought to wield the scepter and guide the empire into the annals of history. As the years passed, legends and folklore began to weave around Frederick Barbarossa, the tale of the sleeping emperor destined to return in the nation's hour of need, became a popular narrative. This folklore, though steeped in myth, spoke to the enduring impact of Frederick's legacy on the collective memory of the people. The lion had left his mark. The roar of Frederick Barbarossa, the lion-hearted emperor, continued to resonate, a timeless echo through the corridors of history. In the next episode, we unravel the complexities of Frederick Barbarossa's interactions with the papacy and the Italian city-states. The clash of ambitions and the dance of diplomacy played a significant role in Frederick's reign. Join us as we journey through a tapestry of intrigue and power struggles. Stay tuned for more tales of this lion-hearted emperor.